Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have a random variable x with a finite variance or finite second moment. The standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, is an upper bound on the absolute value of the difference between the first moment, the mean of the random variable, and its median. We want to prove this inequality. Let alpha be the median of random variable x. What is the definition of the median? It is the real number alpha such that the probability of x greater than or equal to alpha is greater than or equal to one half. Also, the probability that x less than or equal to alpha is greater than or equal to one half. So the median is characterized by these two inequalities. This first inequality is equivalent to saying that the probability that x is strictly less than alpha is less than or equal to one half. And the second inequality is equivalent to saying that the probability that x is strictly greater than alpha is less than or equal to one half. Now, if we take these two statements together, we have the probability that x is greater than or equal to alpha is greater than or equal to one half, but the probability that x is strictly greater than alpha is less than or equal to one half. If x is an absolutely continuous random variable, then the CDF of x is a continuous function. And in this case, the median is simply the value of x at which the CDF is equal to one half. This will be the median. This is the general definition because we can have a discrete random variable or a mixed random variable. And so it is not guaranteed that the CDF function is continuous. Let's take the distance between the first moment, the mean, and the median. The median is a number. So we can write down this expectation of x minus alpha as expectation of x minus alpha. Expectation is linear, and the expectation of a constant is the constant itself. Applying the triangle inequality, which says that the magnitude of the expectation is less than or equal to the expectation of the magnitude, this magnitude is upper bounded by the expectation of the magnitude of x minus alpha. If we have the optimization problem, minimize the expectation of the absolute value of x minus beta over beta. It turns out that the solution to this minimization problem is the median. So the value of beta that minimizes this expectation is the median of the random variable x. Let's take this for granted now, and then we will prove it later. So the expectation of the magnitude of x minus alpha is less than or equal to, and then I can replace this alpha by any real number. I can replace the median by any real number. Let's choose to replace alpha by the first moment of x, the mean value of x. So this inequality is true because alpha is the minimizer of this expectation over beta. Then the expectation of this magnitude is less than or equal to the square root of the expectation of the square of x minus the expected value of x. So this is the inequality that the expectation of the magnitude of y is less than or equal to the square root of the expectation of y squared. This can be justified using Jensen's inequality or Litvinov inequality, or we can come up with a straightforward proof. The expectation of the square of a real number is non-negative because a real number squared is non-negative. So the expectation of magnitude of y minus expectation of magnitude of y all squared, this must be non-negative. Now expand this. If we expand this, we have expectation of magnitude of y squared. So this will be y squared. Then we will have this constant, which is the first moment squared. And then we have minus two, the magnitude of y expectation of the magnitude of y. This must be greater than or equal to zero. Now the first term after taking the expectation is the second moment. The second term, this is a constant. So if we take the expectation, we just get the constant itself, which is the expectation of the magnitude of y. And then we have square. Now, if we apply expectation to this quantity, now minus two and this expectation of the magnitude of y, this is a constant. So it can be taken outside the expectation. And we are left with the expectation of the magnitude of y applied to this term here. This is greater than or equal to zero. Now that's it. We have here the expectation of y squared minus the expectation of the magnitude of y. And then you have squared. This is greater than or equal to zero. So the expectation of y squared, the second moment, is greater than or equal to the square of the first absolute moment. If we take the square root of both sides, then we have the inequality that is employed here. Now, the expectation of the square of x minus expected value of x, that's the variance. And when we take the square root, that's the standard deviation. So here is the proof that the distance or the difference between the first moment of random variable x, the mean, and the median, this distance is upper bounded by the standard deviation. What we need to justify is this step here, this inequality, where we should show that the median is indeed the minimizer of this 
expectation. So we want to show that the median of x, which is called alpha, is the minimizer of this expectation over beta in the set of real numbers. Let's assume first that beta is a real number greater than alpha. Now examine the expectation of the magnitude of x minus beta minus the magnitude of x minus alpha. We will split this expectation using the linearity of expectation into three terms, three expectations. So we have the expectation of this quantity, and then we have indicator that x is less than or equal to alpha. This will be one term. In the second term, we have indicator that x is greater than or equal to beta. And in the third term, x is strictly between alpha and beta. So on the number line, this is alpha. Now beta is assumed to be strictly greater than alpha. x can be less than or equal to alpha. x can be greater than or equal to beta. Or x can be living between alpha and beta. In the first expectation, we have this indicator that x is less than or equal to alpha. So x is here. x is less than alpha. And x is less than beta. So in this case, the absolute value of x minus beta is beta minus x. And the absolute value of x minus alpha is alpha minus x. Beta minus x minus, between brackets, alpha minus x. This is beta minus alpha. This is a constant. We can take it outside the expectation. Now the expectation of the indicator that x is less than or equal to alpha, the indicator is a random variable that is 0 or 1. So the expectation of the indicator is simply the probability that this event is true, the probability that x is less than or equal to alpha. Here, x is greater than or equal to beta. In this case, x is here. x is above beta, which is assumed to be above alpha. The magnitude of x minus beta is x minus beta. The magnitude of x minus alpha is x minus alpha. So we have x minus beta minus, between brackets, x minus alpha. That's alpha minus beta. Alpha minus beta can be taken outside. And then we have expectation of the indicator that x is greater than or equal to beta. That's the probability that x is greater than or equal to beta. We can write this as minus between brackets beta minus alpha and then the probability. And this is this term here. Now, what if x is between alpha and beta? So x is here. Absolute value of x minus beta. Now beta is greater than x, so this is beta minus x. x is superior to alpha, so this absolute value is x minus alpha. If we take the difference, now it is beta plus alpha minus 2x, which is this one here. Let's think about this quantity. Alpha plus beta minus 2x, indicator alpha less than x less than beta. The claim is that this is greater than or equal to alpha minus beta, indicator x between alpha and beta. Now, the indicator has two possibilities. It's either 0 or 1. If the indicator is 0, which means that this inequality is violated, x is not strictly between alpha and beta. In this case, both sides are equal to 0, and the inequality is 0 greater than or equal to 0, which is true. Now, suppose that the indicator is equal to 1. It will be 1 on both sides. If the indicator is 1, it means that x is indeed between alpha and beta. So x is less than beta. Multiply both sides by minus 2. So minus 2x is strictly greater than minus 2 beta. Add alpha plus beta to both sides. So alpha plus beta minus 2x is strictly greater than alpha plus beta minus 2 beta. So alpha plus beta minus 2x is strictly greater than alpha minus beta, which implies that alpha plus beta minus 2x is greater than or equal to alpha minus beta. If this condition is true, then this is greater than or equal to alpha minus beta. So this inequality is true. Now take expectation of both sides. This expectation is lower bounded by alpha minus beta, which can be taken outside the expectation. And then when we apply the expectation to the indicator, it is the probability that x is between alpha and beta. So we have this expectation here is greater than or equal to. We have these two terms. And then we have this term now is lower bounded by this. We have here minus between brackets, the probability of x greater than or equal to beta plus the probability that alpha is less than x less than beta. So the sum of these two probabilities is the probability that x is greater than alpha. So we have the difference between the probability that x is less than or equal to alpha minus the probability that x is greater than alpha. And this probability is 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to alpha. And so this expectation here is greater than or equal to beta minus alpha, which is positive here under the assumption that beta is strictly greater than alpha. And then we have this bracket becomes 2 times the probability that x is less than or equal to alpha minus 1. But alpha is a median of random variable x. 
So the probability that x is less than or equal to alpha, this probability is greater than or equal to one half. So this bracket is non-negative, is greater than or equal to one minus one, which is zero. And so this expectation is greater than or equal to zero, which means that the expectation of magnitude x minus beta is greater than or equal to the expectation of the magnitude of x minus alpha. Note that if beta is set equal to alpha, then basically this quantity becomes zero and the expectation is zero. So we are done in proving that the median is the minimizer of this expectation over beta if we finish the remaining case, which is that beta is strictly less than alpha on the number line. Now, beta is here and alpha is here. Now we take the expectation of this difference. Same thing as above. We split this expectation into three expectations. One of them will have indicator that x is less than or equal to beta. The other that x is greater than or equal to alpha. Then x strictly between beta and alpha. If x is less than or equal to beta, so x is here, then this absolute value is beta minus x. This absolute value is alpha minus x. The difference is beta minus alpha. This expectation becomes beta minus alpha times the probability that x is less than or equal to beta, which can be written as minus between brackets alpha minus beta, the probability that x is less than or equal to beta. Here, x is greater than or equal to alpha. x is here. So the absolute value of x minus beta. Now this is x minus beta, and this is x minus alpha. And the difference is alpha minus beta. And the expectation will be alpha minus beta times the probability that x is greater than or equal to alpha. Now we have this. x is between alpha and beta. So the absolute value of x minus beta, this is x minus beta. But the absolute value of x minus alpha is alpha minus x. Now, if we take this minus this, we have 2x minus alpha minus beta. 2x minus alpha minus beta times the indicator that x is strictly between beta and alpha. This is greater than or equal to beta minus alpha times the same indicator. Now, if the indicator is 0, then we have 0 greater than or equal to 0, which is true. Now, if the indicator is 1, if this indicator is 1, we have beta less than x less than alpha. This means that x is greater than beta. Multiplying both sides by 2, then 2x is greater than 2 beta. So 2x minus alpha minus beta is greater than 2 beta minus alpha minus beta, which is beta minus alpha. This implies that 2x minus alpha minus beta is greater than or equal to beta minus alpha. So this inequality is true. Take expectation of both sides, and then the expectation here is greater than or equal to beta minus alpha times the probability that x is strictly between beta and alpha. Now we have this expectation is lower bounded. Then we take these two guys, and now we take the lower bound from here. Let's combine these two probabilities. This is minus between brackets. Probability that alpha is greater than x is greater than beta, plus the probability that beta is greater than or equal to x. So these two guys together give the probability that x is less than alpha, which can be written as 1 minus the probability that x is greater than or equal to alpha. And these two can combine as 2 times the probability that x is greater than or equal to alpha. Again, from the definition of the median, this probability is greater than or equal to 1 half. Here, alpha is greater than beta. And so this quantity is also non-negative. For every beta, whether greater than alpha, equal to alpha, or less than alpha, this expectation is greater than or equal to 0. So the expectation of the absolute value of x minus beta is greater than or equal to the expectation of the absolute value of x minus alpha, and alpha is the median of x. Indeed, the median of x is the minimizer of this expectation over all real valued data.